Uh, hello everyone and uh, welcome. Uh, in this video I'm going to talk about exporting uh, C++ classes from inside DLLs. And in uh, one of the previous videos I demonstrated how to export a DLL form, uh, which is pretty much similar because a DLL form is nothing but a class of a D form, right? But uh, I'm going to talk uh, now uh, in this video uh, a bit general uh, 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 in general about uh, exporting classes, not just uh, uh, DLL form. And let's say that I have this uh, DLL project here, which has an uh, additional unit. So uh, normally when you create a DLL project, you will get this file one with empty lib main, but uh, I've added a new unit, uh, uh, which I call DLL exports, and it contains a header file and a CPP file. So header file contains a class declaration. I have here uh, included vcl.h uh, header uh, to use message box function, which I used in the uh, implementation file CPP uh, to simply uh, implement two methods, f1, f2, which simply say, okay, this is the f1 method and this is the f2 method, okay. So uh, what I want here, if I return to this header file, this is a class inside the DLL and I want to make it exportable. Uh, and the first thing is uh, that you can do is uh, static DLL linking, which is pretty simple. I will just uh, copy this code as in the case of exporting a DLL, uh, form from inside DLL. So pretty much I say, uh, if exports is defined, then I'll use DLL export uh, micro, which I will place here. Uh, that will specify that this class is exportable. So uh, I want this class to be exportable inside the DLL project and I want it to be importable in a project that uses this DLL. So in order to ensure that this DLL export means uh, this specification, I will define these exports inside DLL project by using project options. And here under C++ set shared options, uh, we have uh, condition defines and I will just add the exports. And once the exports is defined, then inside the DLL project, this will be replaced with uh, DLL export specification, while the application that will use this uh, uh, DLL uh, will not have the exports defined. And for that application, DLL exports will mean actually DLL import. So uh, let's see, I will now uh, build this DLL. In order to uh, uh, implement static DLL linking, what you need to do is uh, pretty much go inside this host application and uh, use project add to project and add uh, uh, a static library that is generated uh, when compiling the DLL. So you need to add it here. And uh, I have this uh, application and it has one form. So I'll just say when clicking on, on this button, you, you also need to include the uh, uh, header file of the DLL, uh, meaning this content here, so that your application knows what uh, classes and uh, functions are there inside the DLL. So you need to include the header and pretty much since you included this uh, static library, you, uh, you have uh, uh, enabled static DLL linking and you need to simply create an object of that DLL class called method one uh, and method two and that should work. So let's see. Uh, DLL class F1, DLL class F2, and that's it. So static DLL linking is pretty easy. And like I said, uh, you only need to uh, go into a header file, add this here and define exports in the uh, project options. And then simply say, this class is exportable uh, from inside the DLL, that's it. And uh, in the uh, host uh, application that uses that DLL, it simply include this static library and include the header file uh, of, of the DLL and simply create a DLL class object or instance as you would normally do even in, in the case that it wasn't a DLL class. So uh, just normally you would create an object like any other object. Uh, 
But now um, the problem with static DLL linking is that it's very dependent on the compiler. So uh, if you are using uh, this DLL with the application that is built with the same compiler, then that's perfect because uh, static DLL linking is very uh, simple and it will save a lot of time, right? So uh, if DLL is used with the application that is built uh, with the same compiler than static DLL linking, like I said, it's ideal. But if you want to use your DLL um, in other applications that are not necessarily compiled with the same compiler which is used for the DLL, then uh, static linking will fail. And in order to uh, use that uh, exportable DLL class, you need to uh, use dynamic DLL linking and not static DLL linking. Uh, with dynamic DLL linking, uh, we, we don't use this uh, a static library of the DLL, so we'll just remove it, remove from the project. Okay, and the technique is, is simply to uh, have two classes. First, I'll remove this DLL export specification here, and if I want to export this class here, I need to create an interface. So first thing is to create the interface class, interface of a DLL class. And uh, uh, here I need to specify uh, a set of pure virtual functions that describe uh, the class that I actually want to export. So this is going to be virtual void of one, a pure virtual function. And the second one, okay. And I'm going to say that this DLL class actually implements the uh, interface that I have uh, previously declared. Okay. Uh, CPP file uh, remains the same. And uh, what we need to uh, do extra here, as you can see, we didn't specify anything to be exportable here. Uh, actually, one thing is exportable, and that's going to be a method, uh, it's usually called a factory, that will actually create a DLL object. So I'm just going to say uh, that method is going to create a DLL object and return its address. So it's going to be a DLL class pointer return type because it will return uh, uh, an address of a new uh, DLL class object. Uh, it's going to be exportable. Uh, I'm going to use standard calling convention and I'm just going to uh, call it create uh, DLL class instance. Okay, so let's call it like that. And uh, that method will simply uh, return new DLL uh, class object. Okay. Actually, this uh, uh, part will go into CPP file, where is the um, implementation. Uh, and in the implementation part, I will not need this or this. While in the header file, I will just leave the uh, declaration part. And uh, there is one important thing uh, to note here. When you are having a, a function such as this one, uh, that uh, creates uh, uh, an object instance inside the DLL, you should also deallocate that object inside the DLL. So application and uh, DLLs are two different modules and you should never mix uh, uh, memory allocation uh, operations uh, between uh, modules. So if you created an object inside the DLL, you should also uh, deallocate the object inside the DLL. And in order to do that, I will create, uh, I can also create another public, uh, uh, another global uh, function, uh, exportable function that will simply say destroy DLL uh, class instance, or I can here add another method, which I'll call virtual uh, void destroy. So, and it's going to be a pure, pure virtual method. And um, here, void destroy. And uh, I'm going to implement it here. Um, destroy. And uh, it will simply do uh, delete this. 
okay, it will uh, be allocated uh, its own self. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, so if you want to export this class, you will, uh, like I said, first you need to create an interface uh, that contains only pure virtual functions, meaning to have this as, as a pure uh, abstract class, and then uh, um, implement that interface inside that class. Uh, the only thing that is actually exportable is the method that will create a uh, uh, DLL class instance, nothing else. So this is the only thing that is exportable here. And uh, let's try to uh, build this DLL to see if we made any mistakes. Okay, that's done. Now let's go in the application. Uh, so in the application, uh, we don't use the static uh, library of the DLL because now we are going to do a static, uh, we are not going to do static DLL linking, but we are going to do a runtime DLL linking. And in order to do that, uh, you also need to have uh, this uh, header, DLL header uh, included. So that's also necessary, but this will fail because we are not using any more static DLL linking. We need to uh, um, manually load the DLL and uh, manually load the uh, DLL functions, uh, address them. And I have already prepared the code, so we don't uh, waste time typing. And uh, so um, in order to do that, first we need to create a function pointer uh, to the uh, method that is exportable from inside the DLL. And as you uh, can notice, uh, the only method that is exportable is the one that created uh, that creates an instance of DLL class. So we need to have a pointer inside the application uh, to this uh, function. And let's back here. So uh, this is going to be a function pointer. And first I uh, load DLL. And then I locate the function address, uh, uh, which function uh, function create DLL class instance, uh, create DLL class instance. So that is the function. And when I have addressed that function, then I uh, call it, uh, and uh, it will create a new uh, instance of uh, DLL class, right? Meaning to create a new object, and I. Uh, it, use it like this, I create a pointer that will point to that new uh, DLL class instance. And uh, with this pointer, I, I will uh, call the F1 and F2 and destroy. So let's just see if this works. F1. F2, and it works. And as you can see, we have used create DLL uh, class instance to create an object, and it's called uh, and it's created in the DLL module. And like I said, you don't uh, mix uh, uh, memory allocation uh, operations between modules. So if we created this uh, 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 object inside DLL using a DLL method, then we need to destroy that object also using the DLL method. Uh, in this case, this is a global function inside DLL, and we destroyed that object using uh, DLL method destroy. So that, that's pretty much what you uh, need to look out for, because it will be a mistake to say a delete uh, object here, okay? Because you would be deleting it from uh, an application module, not from the DLL module. And that's how it's done. Uh, so as you can see, you have two different approaches, but uh, if you, you are going to use static DLL linking, if your application is uh, built with the same compiler as uh, your DLL, uh, but if you want to use your DLL in um, uh, C++ applications, for example, that are built with different compilers or different versions of the compiler, uh, the same compiler, then you need to use uh, runtime DLL linking. And this is how you do it, uh, like I said, uh, create an interface of the class that you want to export, then the class itself will actually implement that interface and you only need to export one function and that function uh, will uh, create an object of that class. And uh, that's it. Um, I, hope, uh, I hope you uh, 
find this useful and uh, it's pretty much uh, very useful to me because I'm uh, constantly doing something with DLLs and uh, like I said, you have these two different approaches and you need to decide when to use, uh, when, when one is more appropriate than the other. Thank you for watching and see you later.